And we're live. Hello and welcome to my live coding stream. Hey, Mud Shark. I was wondering if you were here. And uh, it's been a couple weeks, but uh, eager to get back into. Well, actually, I'm not sure where we're going to land today with refactoring tennis. Like, are we done? Maybe. Um, at least with tennis game one, we'll find out. Hey, Ed. Good to have you. Um, before we start, I don't know. The uh, Twitter has gone to hell. <laughs> but I never imagined it to be so funny. It's sad. Um, uh, because Okay, a little <clears throat> personal reminiscing is that I Q coding is not my first Twitter handle. I I had another one um mainly around um uh sort of spirituality. It, I was exploring, uh, openly exploring my spirituality. And as part of that, I sort of stumbled into Twitter in, and was like, what is this? And how, how is this more interesting than blogs? Like, what, what is it about it? And started to really explore it. I actually started to write some things on my old blog about it and how to use it. Um, so I've been on there for quite some time and, and uh, made connections with all sorts of people. That's the best part, the people, right? And now it goes to hell. Oh, well. <laughs> well, I say, oh, well, but also I want to acknowledge uh, at fit, at Twitter, also at Facebook, and m many other places that aren't making the news. Lots of layoffs happening right now. I've been laid off more than once, shall we say, many times. I've been fired a couple times, too. That's a fun fact. Um, but uh, as I said in a tweet, <laughs> two tweets total, um, as I said, uh, in one tweet that, uh, as I kept getting laid off, like by one company or another, Hey, Hamza, um, should put my hello in there. Um, I got, I became more adaptable to it, but it never made it feel good. Like it was always a punch in the gut. Every single time, it's like a punch in the gut to get laid off. And so, for folks who, if anyone watching who has been laid off, um, hang in there, it gets better. Uh, one of my first lessons about being laid off, the first time I got laid off, the first lesson I got from actually a, a they, the company was kind enough to send us to essentially layoff school. Um, and the very first session, the facilitator said, how many of you, this is your first time being laid off? And I'm like, yes. And, um, and the facilitator said, this will not be your last. That's just the way of life now. So that was a mind shift for me. And I don't know if that helps anyone. Hopefully you can help someone else because we know people. I know people in Twitter and uh, probably some folks at Meadows as well. Anyway, what's going on with y'all? Um, what else is happening before we get into the code? My upcoming public workshop has shifted dates. Uh, it is no longer going to start in January. It will start in March. Um, this will be, we're calling it industrial iOS development because I work at industrial logic, but we're discovering that maybe that's not a good title. 
I think the we're we're gonna play around with it, but um, maybe it should be called modern iOS development, and it's gonna be on the iOS side. Like if you are for for folks who are super pro iOS developers, this may not be for you. We probably have other courses that are better for you. Um, but for anyone who is newish, like a junior, um, you know, just a, a couple years in to the iOS development, your iOS development career, recommend this to them because they will learn a lot. My secret is that the most important things will not be about iOS. Which you can see here in the What You Will Learn. So, uh, whoops, let me grab that uh, link. Pass this along to anyone, anyone you know who's, who's a, like a junior iOS developer. Maybe their company can support them and support their growth and accelerate their careers. That would be awesome. Okay, let's see what we have going in Tennis Game. And, uh, oh, we've got a few more folks in here. Welcome. Um, do say hello in the chat. And as always, you are welcome to ask questions about anything that's even unrelated to the code. Like, I don't know. Ask me anything. I'm happy uh, to entertain your thoughts, ideas, questions. What's going on in Tennis Game? Tennis Game, this refactoring that we did, now Tennis Game 1 is very slimmed down. All it does, oh, here, let's, Mud Shark, let's do this real fast. You pointed out that it is not a match. It is a set, I believe. Automated rename. So wonderful. I run tests. If they pass, it commits. The power of TCR. A game? Nope, a game? I thought it was a set. It, it is game after all? Oh, man. <laughs> all right. And with that, we've got a couple of commits. These are just my test commits, uh, no. just to make sure that TC the TCR system is working for us, because there was a time when it wasn't. Point, game, set, match. Ah, thank you, Ed. This is why you shouldn't send developers off with out a, a domain expert handy a human not a document so game it is uh what else what do we have let's take a look at game because it may be done right game has two players I wish it I wish I didn't have this conditional but mm, maybe it's okay After watching um rewatching uh Sandy Metz's excellent talk on uh on object oriented programming it reminds me she reminded me that uh if Conditionals, that's kind of uh, smelly in in good OO, but it might be done enough. Um, this and scoring sets up the rules. It goes through and applies uh, uh, whichever rule it can. Player is, hmm, 
Player has a name and a score. I'm, I'm wondering about this. This is awfully thin, but it might be okay. Score. Score's got some interesting things. Uh, it's got some, some, quite a bit of tennis domain logic in here, which is good, including how to call out the scores. So, you know, I think this is good enough. I think this is done for where we started. So what do you want to do? <laughs> well, that's tennis game one. We could go on to tennis game two, which has a completely different set of smells. I've never even looked at it. But I also don't want to just keep flogging uh, the same old horse. Swift UI? <laughs> um, yeah, you made me laugh. I know it's the hot thing. And I am not yet a fan. But it is something to think about. Um, yeah, let's let's talk talk a little bit about where to go. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I obviously can't jump into it right here. Um, this is. Here, let's take a look at the other, uh, whoa, here's, here's a very dense tennis game three. <laughs> it passes the tests, but it is dense. Um, I'm just worried about like, you know, continuing to, uh, beat this horse when it may be at its end. It is super hard to understand. I think probably today um, might be a good day to start down one of these roads on Tennis Game 2 or 3. Um, but I should probably maybe think about another kata. Um, doo -doo. You know, I have a handy list. My face. So we are doing a refactoring kata. Um, we could do a TDD kata. We could do a legacy code kata. The Gilded Rose is always a good one. You want to just jump into the Gilded Rose? The Gilded Rose, hosted by Emily Bache, the queen of code katas. If you have not seen her site. Nah, was that a nah, not start Gilded Rose another time? Yeah. Um, Legacy, I think legacy might be a good thing uh, to explore, though. Some of these, let's let's talk through some of these. Um, so the baby steps timer, uh, I help. I did not. I took David's uh, David Tanzer's uh, kata and I ported it to Swift. It is code. I'm pretty sure it has no tests. And it is all about a view controller. This could be interesting. A view controller that uh, is dealing with a timer. The idea behind uh, the baby steps kata, or the 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 app itself is that um, 
you should work in baby steps and you should set a, have a timer going. It's sort of like TCR um, in that uh, if you've gone two minutes without a commit, maybe it's you ought to like just reset and try again. And timers are tricky and a view controller can be tricky. So that might be a fun one. Uh, trip service, uh, Sandro Mancuso's Kata is, is about networking. With calls to things that we shouldn't actually invoke during unit testing. Um, so the, the thing to explore there is how do you test that? How do you test something that where that has bits that you shouldn't test right yeah external apis uh networking timer gilded rows the gilded rows um might be a good one to start with because oh and the parrot kata are are is fun hmm shoot i mentioned the parrot here did i There it is. Okay, so this, the parrot one is a, is another refactoring one. What I'm the the distinction I'm making between the parrot kata, uh, between refactoring katas and legacy katas is that the parrot kata should have tests, I believe. Yes, it does. The parrot kata is based on, well, it's based on the Monty Python thing, the parrot sketch. We could do this. You want to do this? This one was fairly new to me. And there's so many. Gosh. Oh, you want to see how many? Let's go to Emily's uh, repos. On and on and on and on. There are so many katas. A world full of them. It's fun. Parrot Kata, here we come. I don't think I have the parrot. Oh, I do have it in here. All right, let's let me make another. Uh, do, 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 do. There it is. Parrot refactoring kata into the Swift version. And let us see what we have. Close the tennis one. And let's uh, start off by running the tests. It's taking a little bit, first time around. And the README. Readme is kind of important. Let's go there. Yeah, 
Here's the kata. Can you spot any coat smells? I'll give you a clue. A spot of polymorphism should improve matters. Refactor this code, take small steps, run the tests off, and see how small and beautiful you can make it. It is heavily inspired by one of the examples in the refactoring book. Absolutely, if you have never read the book, grab it. Okay, we've got seven tests. Here you can see the names. The speed of an African parrot with no coconuts, with one coconut, with two coconuts. The speed of a European parrot. The speed of a Norwegian parrot. If it's nailed, Norwegian blue, excuse me. If it's nailed, if it's not nailed, but has uh, had experienced high voltage, or if it's not nailed. What's in parrot? Parrot type is a simple enum. Gosh, I should get rid of this. Oh, let's set up TCR. This, this one here is the baby steps timer. Two minutes and it'll revert. And here's TCR. Let's go. So I don't think we need this import. Let's try it. Okay, good. All right. You can just sort of shrink down and be quiet down here. Oh, what's in the parrot? The parrot is full of a switch statement, depending on the type of parrot. And base speed, load factor, another base speed thing. All right. Number of coconuts, so forth. So this is an exercise in object-oriented programming. Inheritance. Oh, shocking. Are we allowed to do such a thing? Let's create three different classes of parrot. Exactly. Because the parrot should determine its own speed. That's the OO way. Uh, the FP way would be, you know, to have functions. Um, but the OO way is all about send a message to parrot. Let the parrot decide what its speed is. So let's figure out how to get there. Let's create three different parrots, and I'm just going to make them subclasses for now. This may change. So if we have the European parrot, like that, and I'll commit that. All right. Looks like, you know, one thing I've observed is that uh, Swift, this is not, um, this is a Swift package project. Testing is not as great. It seems to take a little bit longer. What else we got? African. Yeah, that's slow to me. Normally what I do, but I won't do this uh, during our time together, is uh, say, forget, then forget Swift Package Manager. Like move this into a proper project. Three types of parrots, unused, and now, so they are exactly the same as parrot because they're, they're subclassing it, but they're overriding nothing. So here in the initializer, I, I want a factory method. The, based on the type of parrot, it will create 
the right type of thing. That's where the switch will move. So let us begin a static. I guess, yeah, static. Um, make parrot. Based on the type. This will return a parrot. Now, how to get this to pass? Uh, right now, this won't compile, right? Because it's got to return something. So just to get it, this will look silly. But I am just trying. Oop. I'm just trying to get to a point where uh, where I can commit, and I commit by writing tests. Where is that? Is not. Hmm. Something funny there. Like if I break, I just want to make sure that that TCR is set up. If I change something here, will this in fact revert? No. Damn it. All right. So TCR is broken. Uh, in this for this project. Okay, I have to do it by hand. Yeah. I don't know how to fix that. In the past, I've had to reboot my machine. Wait a second, though. I I thought I cloned this, and the version control is like, well, I don't know. Which leaves me a little confused. And yet there it is. Okay, this is not set up right. The repo is out at the the super parent level, but I guess because it's it's way up there. It didn't find it. No, I don't want to create a new repo. Can I just create a repo at the Swift level? Let me just say yes. This is an experiment. Checks failed. Uh, oh, commit anyway due to TCR. All right, now let's see if, we, if, if this will work. So let me break the code. Okay. Phew. Yay, it was so, it got a little confused about where the repo is. That's why I normally, um, when I run a kata with, with students, uh, I don't use these uh, repos directly. Uh, I go through and actually create something and set up the git ignore nicely and all that. Okay, let us now Create the right type based on based on what we got going on. And maybe it needs to take all these parameters. 
I think it needs to take them all and pass them in. And essentially just pass them along to the constructor. Just for now. Just pass them all along. Probably will change it. Okay, so now based on the type, let's switch on the type. Here's something that Xcode does better, I think, than, than app code. I want all three types. Like I want every case in here. Xcode immediately offers um, saying, would you like me to fill them in every case? I don't know if there's a way to do that. I don't think there is. It's a bit of a surprise. I should file that as a uh, as a feature request. All right. Well, here we go. Just going to borrow this. And I'm going to Duplicate this, Ooh, move it up, move it up, and move it up. There is, this may look silly, but I'm simply, um, taking the one thing that it used to do and spreading it across all three. Again, it doesn't matter. Uh, but now, now I can say this is European. This is African. And this is Norwegian blue. Again, nothing is calling this yet. Let's go over to the test code and let's have it use these. So everywhere it's calling, it's making a parrot inside of here. I should be able to say, whoop, make parrot. Actually it's, parrot dot make parrot. Let's see if that'll work. So unlike the uh, tennis example, I am actually, f I feel free to change the API um, to say, use, use the, uh, the factory instead. All right. So all that passes. Now we can get to work. And I'm going to do this the dumb way. Let's start with European Parrot and let's override the speed. And I'm going to do this by simply dropping in a straight copy. Oh, base speed doesn't exist. Interesting. Okay. These can no longer be private. I think uh, I'll make these file private. That should fix that. And the is nailed. Ah. Being a straight copy, the European parrot should still use the um, should still pass because the code is unchanged. However, we know it's European. So I should be able to now doo -doo 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 -doo, get rid of everything. 
and now get rid of the return and that is the base that is the speed of a european parrot i'll just leave it like that let's keep going let me do the same thing down here in the african parrot i'm going to override Slap it in, run the tests, it commits. This is African, so I should be able to get rid of everything that is not related. Remove the return. Whee! And one more time. Run the tests, watch it commit, and get rid of everything that is not Norwegian blue. Getting better. Uh, do, 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 do. So, in the base class, this is inside of Parrot, which we can see through the breadcrumbs here. I should now be able to return a, a dummy value of zero. Because essentially, this is now abstract. Excellent. Um, I don't think anything is using the type anymore. It's highlighted there in green, I mean in gray. I believe that means it is no longer in use. No, it just means I had my cursor on it. But I don't think anything is using it other than, other than the initializer. So let's try getting rid of that. And get rid of it there. Cool. So now we don't need the parrot type we don't need it in the initializer uh, not rename I can remove the parameter like that and that should pass cool so now parrot parrot no longer has a type the factory method does because it needs to know What about number of coconuts? Who uses this? The African parrot uses the number of coconuts, but nothing else does. So I would like the African parrot, I think, to have a number of coconuts. I want, I want, I want to move this down. Let's see if we can't do that. Um, I'm going to copy it, slap it into the African parrot here, this is how to do this in small steps. Let me set up that initializer come on what's a good way to do this no that's what we will do i'm going to call the super init But I'm also going to set like that. And now this should refer, there we go. The highlighting shows us that this is the number of coconuts it uses. Let's see if this works. 
cannot override with a stored property. Let's change the name. This is only the current declaration. We'll call this two and try that. Okay, so that worked. Now I think I can get rid of coconuts elsewhere. Right, so what I, not rename, I keep getting this mixed up. Not that one. Bear with me. So I get my uh, shortcuts right. There we go. Change signature. I'm going to not pass in the number of coconuts into the base class anymore. And I'm going to get rid of it here and let's see if this works. Have to get rid of it from the in inside the initializer. Oh, this is failing. This is terrible. Oh gosh. Da 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 da. This is where we reset hard. We'll try again. Reset hard, one of the best tricks of refactoring. Start over. Because you're right, I still need it. I definitely need it on the African parrot. I want to not override this. Let's see if it'll let me. Ah. It still wants to uh, to keep that, but let me revert that one line. Here, I'll just go like that. Darn it. It's not an override. Darn it! <laughs> Thank you. Darn it again! Isn't this number of coconuts Oh, it's because I set it up here. Phew. Okay, so I didn't like that. I didn't like that it took so many steps to fix it and to get back to green. But if you think of it in terms of how long did that take um, to get there, according to this, it's been four minutes since my last commit, and that included a reset of going, starting and failing. So I probably was like in not compiling for about two minutes there. Four, if you include the, the first attempt. And that makes me really uncomfortable. I don't like that. I would rather just like, what can I do to, do that in smaller steps. Maybe we'll find a way. But I should be able to get rid of the number of coconuts now in the parent class. I think there's probably a better way. Let's try again with voltage. Voltage is only used by the Norwegian blue. Hmm. Uh, 
how to do this. I have an idea, and that is to make the initializer explicit, maybe not. Make them setters, maybe. Hmm, hmm, hmm. How to get there in small steps, which is the whole point of a kata. It's not to... Nobody actually needs this code. The point is to learn and to try things. And I want to rely on automated refactoring as much as possible. If I... If I make the initializers explicit, will it may will it help? If I add extract some property class. Let's think about the steps here. We want to pass the voltage down into the Norwegian blue, not to these others. I want to move this sort of mask it. Um, can I, how about this? Can I say, set it, Set the base speed and create a local variable here. Not a local variable. Create a property called voltage2. Voltage is a double. Hmm. All paired in its with one parameter. Oh, that's what you mean by property class. Me that that would that would have been a nice way to proceed. Is to is to pull out like all the parameters into one um, data clump. That would have been nice. Let's keep going here. So if I set, I'm just going to do this to vary the signature. Like, I think this will fail to build until I actually say number of, wait, this is the Norwegian blue. It doesn't need coconuts. Wrong thing. Voltage to. Voltage, voltage, voltage. Okay, I think I'm I'm finding my way there. And this is something I saw yesterday at work is that we wanted to um, uh, change the type of a variable, but not quite proceed in, in um, a parallel change. Instead, uh, we wanted to do uh, lean on the compiler to show us. We wanted to see red. But because it was TypeScript uh, and, and or JavaScript, uh, because JavaScript is so forgiving about whatever, uh, we needed to not just change, we needed to change the name to something too, like voltage too, instead of, 
so that any, any place that referred to voltage would show in a red line. Otherwise, if I use the same name, JavaScript would be like, what, whatever, voltage. So here, if I say number of voltage two, and we call this, pass this in here, I think this will pass in one step. No! Almost. Okay, so that was a lot better in terms of how long I was broken. That was a lot better. So now I should be able to el eliminate the voltage here and here. Good. And now not rename. I keep doing that. I, I uh, have leaned away from the refactor this because it's an extra step. I'm trying uh, to use shift F6 for rename, command F6 for change signature. I'm just getting it wrong. Good. Okay. That was much better. Should have copied the initializer to start with. Hmm. Now I ought to be able to rename this to voltage, which probably means, oh, there's a number of coconuts too I need to fix up. Let's do, let's do this step by step. Which means I can re rename that which, and here I've got number of coconuts too. You see how much uh, easier it is to, as opposed to Xcode uh, refactoring, where you either go up to the menu or you go to the context menu. I can just do this in one uh, rename, which you ought to be able to do in both IDs, um, which probably suggests that Xcode, let's see, let's find out. Does it have a, a rename key binding that I don't know about? It does. Three of them for some reason. Editor menu for source code. Editor. So probably what um, I should do for Xcode is set this to the same there, Shift F6. And that will make life better. Does it have it for Swift, though? Um, it's got rename. We'll find out. I, I'm just, you seem to be going faster than when you were doing TCR. Hello, uh, John CVB. Welcome. Good to have you. Thank you for your first time chat. Um, I am doing TCR. Uh, that is, every time I'm, I'm running the tests, it is committing. So I'm not sure what you are comparing it to. Perhaps you can uh, expound on your thoughts. I'm I'd be curious to see what you are seeing. Manual TCR? Hmm. Not exactly. Yeah, so so this this is this has been committing once I set up the uh the repo correctly. All right, let's you know what? Let's keep going. We're almost uh, at the top of the hour. But I think that is nailed is only used by the Norwegian blue. Interesting. Let's do the same thing. 
uh, and this time it'll be even easier because the initializer is already down here. Let us take is nailed. Actually, no, 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 no. Do it this way, John. Say self is nailed to. That's so it doesn't conflict. And create this property. A Boolean. And that will be ignored. But now I can say is nailed to. That's that's where it gets used. And I think now in I can remove it from here. Arg, not quite. That's because it is doing something up here. All right. But if I get this, that's not bad. Having having one compile error and fixing it up, that's not too bad. I don't. That doesn't make me uncomfortable. This initializer is now bogus. I don't think it needs to exist. Look at this. Uh, is nailed to can now be is nailed. Yeah, so every time I'm running the tests, it is. Uh, I, I, I do have to run the tests. That is a difference. Um, it might be nice to set up, and I probably could do this uh, to be like the project I work on um, for my day job to have a file watcher so that when I hit save, it runs the test for me. Actually, I'm pretty sure I submitted that as a request to JetBrains because their other IDEs have it, but app code does not. So, Hey, JetBrains folks, anyone watching? Um, thank you so much for inline. Oh my gosh. Uh, but uh, might be nice to have a file watcher that says, oh, you hit save. Let's run tests. And then it would be like, oh, you ran tests. They failed. Revert. Cool. Well, this is kind of fun. Uh, is there anything to clean up Base speed. In Xcode, you can add commands uh, commands to the key bind. Hmm. You'll have to uh, you have to tell me about that. Uh, now fixing it for the Euro African and European parrots. All right. So let's see. Oh, because it doesn't need all that stuff. Right. This only needs the number of coconuts. So we get rid of voltage and is nailed. This has voltage and is nailed. Uh, this one doesn't have anything. The Norwegian. Voltage is nailed. Yeah. Got it. All right. This is... I would say that I... Well, no. Now let's, let's see where base speed and load factor come in. Okay, load factor. I want to move down to African Parrot. I'm going to cut and paste that. Let's see if that works. Good. I can now just say it is private. Excellent. 
And what uses this base speed? That is used Looks like it might be in a couple. No, this one. This one. Okay, this one is only used here. So let's move this down. And that should start cleaning up the parrot itself. It has a base speed probably is still okay. That's probably used in a couple of places. Yep. All right. So that is, I would say is, is a good sort of part one of, um, of the parrot kata done in Swift. A good part two would be to say, well, can we move away from subclassing and instead make parrot a protocol so that these can be structs? I will leave that to you. But for now, I think that that's a good session for today. Um, what were we going to do next time? Let's decide real quick. Oh, possibly the baby steps timer. No, no, no. Gilded Rose. The Gilded Rose as a good legacy kata, because it has no tests. Let's do that next time. All right. Uh, thanks for coming by. I really appreciate your participation. Uh, keyboard preferences. Commands was added to keyboard preferences, but for Xcode, I'll check that out and send me a link. Um, I'm curious to learn what you learned. Thank you for coming. Um, I hope that you are able... Thank you. Uh, to have a good week. I, unlike the last, well, the past month has been spotty for me, right? In terms of showing up, it's been busy. Um, had a good time last week, uh, but I should be here next week. Trying to think if there's anything else to say. Oh, uh, the usual stuff, I should say, just for folks who are watching after the fact and are not present in our live coding session. Welcome. Thanks for watching to all the way to the end. Um, if the, if you've seen this on Twitch, hey, give it a follow. Consider subscribing on Twitch. That's, that's just a, a little way to put some um, pocket change um, as a, like a tip jar um, towards me. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, hit the notification bell, whatever, train the algorithm. Um, so that my stuff turns up if this is interesting to you. Good luck out there. Uh, let's see uh, how Twitter is going. Oh, I am on Mastodon. If you, if you, I changed my Twitter handle. Um, not handle, my, my name. If you go to my Twitter bio and uh, also into my Twitter handle here, I'll show you. There's a link to my Mastodon account. There it is in my name, all big and and hopefully obvious. So I'm starting to use Mastodon more. Like I'm starting to reach for Mastodon first, even though the um, the the amount of of stuff there is very low still. Uh, I'm finding it very engaging to go there first and then go to Twitter. So hit me up on Mastodon. Follow me there. Thank you for uh, coming by. I will see you next week. Take care. Um, find joy even in the midst of chaos. 
These Twitter's funny. All right, see you.